Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at uh, Animal Kingdom Continued. This is Phylum Nematoda, so this is the roundworms. Uh, these are the nasty little ones. They are microscopically scary. So here's just an example. This one's not that scary, but it's got that round worm-like structure. But let's look at the phylum level characteristics. So you can pause this one, jot them all down, or you can wait till after I uh, mention them and then write them or pause and write it down then. Uh, so these ones, the big difference between this and the flatworms, obviously these ones are round, not flat. Uh, it's similar again, no segmentation. Lengthwise muscle that allows them to move like a snake. Uh, the big difference here as well is that they have a complete digestive system, so two openings. It has a mouth at one end and the anus at the other. Soft body, same thing, hydrostatic skeleton, keeps its internal uh, structure alive due to the water pressure. Bilateral symmetry is similar as well. And no circulatory system because it does not need to as well. It diffuses, uh, all the nutrients diffuse through the body. Okay, so you can pause that. So again, just a quick little... Uh, picture of the structure here so here's the head here's the anus food comes in here goes out there uh, as we can see here we have some saliv salivary glands which helps to bre break down their food it has its intestine uh, which is different than the gastrovascular cavity uh, ovaries for reproduction eggs as well uh, so you guys can jot that one down but we'll see this structure again in class looking at a cross section of it uh, we have the different la layers here. We have a pseudo column, so it's not quite an A column because there's a little bit of space in between uh, the inner layer here, which would be similar to the gastrointestinal cavity of the flatworms, but this one is a true intestine. Uh, excretory canal, so no flame cells, uh, uterus, ovaries, and it's also got a nerve cord. Okay, so we have a picture of that in your notes. So let's look at that nervous system. So we still have that cephalization at the head. Uh, we have the uh, several ganglia or nerve bundles. It's Again, it's not quite a real brain. It's just nervous tissue uh, centralized at the head. Uh, they have sensory organs that can detect chemicals uh, given off by prayer host, similar to that of the eye spot. It does not have an eye spot like the platyalminthes, but it still can detect uh, stimulus from other uh, outside objects like host, or sorry, like prey. Uh, longitudinal muscles, so it is able to move, and it is snake-like movement. Okay, so you can pause that and get it down. Reproduction, sexual reproduction. Most species have separate male and females. However, a few are still hermaphroditic, which means both sexual or uh, male and female parts. Fertilization occurs with the female, so no penis fencing in this one. And parasitic life cycles can involve many hosts, similar to uh, that of the platyhelminthes. So pause that and get that down. Uh, some diversity, which means some differences between them. Uh, the organisms, most are free living, found in all habitats, and they're very successful because there's lots of species and large numbers of them. So here's an example of a large number of the free living, all of these big long worms living off other organisms. So these ones are not parasitic. Uh, but there are some parasitic ones, and they are pretty nasty. They infect all, uh, a lot of different animals and plants. Ascaris, which we're going to see in detail, infects humans, and it can be a nasty, nasty little guy. So let's look at an Ascaris life cycle. This might take some time, so you're going to have to jot this one down. Uh, the adult worms live in the intestines. They produce eggs that, li uh, that leave, that live uh, in the host fetus, or the leave in the host fetus, I see what it's saying there. Uh, feces contaminated by the food water eaten by another host. The eggs hatch in that new host, and they bury themselves into the walls in the intestine and enter surrounding the blood vessels. They're carried by the blood, and the worm ends up in the lungs. They travel out the air passage in the throat, then are swallowed to begin uh, the process again. We're going to see some more scarce videos in class. We won't bother showing you now. Uh, this is what one of them looks like. Nasty, nasty looking guy. So here's its hooks which can be used to embed into the intestine of the host and they tend to go in through the bare feet okay so a lot of them happen in third world countries where there's no shoes and uh, yeah it's a nasty little thing another example of a ascaris parasite in the foot of a human and so let's look at a hookworm life cycle it's similar to that of the ascaris the hookworm eggs hatch and develop in the soil they use the sharp teeth to break into the feet they continue burrowing until they have hit the bloodstream, travel in the lungs, coughed up and swallowed to eventually reach the intestines, and then adult worms dig into the intestine wall and suck off the body of the suck the blood of the host.
So bloodsuckers. Uh, here's just another just visual. You guys can pause this one and look at it, but you don't have to write it down because we pretty much just said it. Here's another of the hookworms, and this is what the hookworm looks like. A few different types there. Nasty. And I just put this visual up because I thought it looked very cool. Uh, Filaria worms, these ones cause the elephantitis. Um, so it's a parasitic worm that gets into the uh, body of, the, of a human, and it causes it to look almost just everything bloated and, and quite nasty. Another ones, and there is some very, very graphic images of elephantitis. Uh, I, I chose some of the ones that were uh, less graphic, should you say. And then the guinea worm, nasty little guy as well, long, and uh, we will show some videos of how they get these uh, worms out of the system as well, but I thought since you guys might be watching this at night, I didn't want to give you nightmares. All right. All right, so if you have any questions, make sure you jot them all down. We're going to investigate this in detail when we get to class, so have yourselves a wonderful night.